Okay, my friends, so for this part of the tutorial, we're going to be assembling the SVG file that I have designed for the keychains. And this is what the SVG box will look like once you've cut it using your, either your Silhouette or your Cricut. Um, very easy to assemble. You're going to need some double-sided adhesive, and this is the suggestion that Vanessa Angel Rose Design, and I will link her below, gave me. Um, this is a Dollar Tree double-sided adhesive. Now, I never thought about using this for projects that, you know, we're going to use and toss later on, or when we're doing projects that are like the prototypes. I do a lot of prototype projects uh, when I'm designing. So this is a wonderful way of not using your Su Wang score tape. You can use the double-sided double tape from Dollar Tree, which is a whole lot affordable than wasting your good tape. So. Thank you, Vanessa, for suggesting that. And again, I will link my friend's uh, YouTube channel below so you guys can go check out her website or her YouTube channel because she's always offering quick, easy tips and orga organizational ideas that you can use in your craft room. Now, you're also going to use uh, some acetate. Now, this one here, I have cut it at two and a quarter by four and a half. Your scissors because you're going to be trimming down your score tape now this is probably about three eighths of an inch so I need to cut it halfway in um, but that's what the scissors are for right you can use some embellishments um, to decorate the outside of your box you can put a little sentiment whatever you want you can put some seam binding tie a bow on it the sky is the limit with this and it just makes a beautiful way of housing these little keychains. If you're going to craft fairs, you can put your little keychains here and you can cut these as many as you need. Now, when you're cutting these on your Silhouette or your Cricut, it takes about an 8 by 12 sheet of cardstock. I use an 80 pound cardstock, so just keep that in mind. It is heavyweight cardstock. Um, for the settings, just check your blades um, as far as how you're going to set your settings, but I always have it on a heavy weight cardstock when I'm cutting these, okay? Now again, another quick tip is on the silhouette, unless you have the silhouette, the newest silhouette, that's the Cameo 5. Now the Cameo 5 does have a score blade, so when I make this template available for sale on my website, um, I will have it with the perforated lines for those who are um, cutting and do not have a score blade um, or for those uh, that have any machine that doesn't score, okay? So just keep that in mind. I will also have it for those that do have a score blade. I know that in Cricut, if you upload the um, SVG file, you can go in there and select the line you want to score and go up to your um, outline and select it for it to be scored. You do have to switch out blades. Now with the Cameo 5 for Silhouette, there is a new um, scoring blade. I have not yet opened my machine. I'm probably going to do an unboxing of that here shortly, but just so you know, that one has a score blade particularly particularly made for the Cameo 5. I will demo that here shortly in the next couple weeks um, so you guys can see how easy it is to score. In the meantime, I have just gone ahead and scored those lines. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and take my score tape. Um, I need to go back to Dollar Tree and buy more of these. Um, the Dollar Tree here where I live, um, they don't have much, so yeah. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set these aside. I'm going to grab one of my templates and I use, um, like I said, it's an 80 pound score. So where you're going to put this score tape, it's going to be here, right? So you're going to grab your acetate that's two and a quarter by four and a half. Pretty much measure it up to where I'm cutting, about so. Um, And then I'm going to take my scissors and just trim it right, cut right in the middle. You can probably take your blade and trim it like that, but then you're going to have a hard time lifting it up unless you have like a um, silicone mat, which I do, but I don't want to cut my mat, so. 
right, so just trim it halfway down. So for this part of the video, I'm going to mute myself, and then you guys are going to see me speeding it through as I cut the tape, okay? So again, before I start speeding, I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on the outer, flush it against the outer lines or the outer edge of my acetate on both sides. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to grab another piece and I'm going to lay it here down at the bottom. This one I don't, uh, the bottom piece I don't have to trim that. It's just those two sides. And the reason is because I'll show you here in a second why we're doing it that way. Okay. And before I start speeding up, I'm going to briefly talk. Okay. So one thing you can do is you can grab a paper towel, wipe, make sure it's dry, and kind of run it through your acetate to remove any smudge marks. All right, so the reason why we trim the side pieces is because where this is going to sit in the inside of, this is the front, and you know it's the front because it has that embossed look on it, it's the inner edge, you, you don't want it too wide so it doesn't stick out right so we want that to sit right like so see that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the film backing you're gonna do this for all of your you know if you make a hundred of these you do that for all of them and you might be able to find some score tape that it's not as um, as wide that you don't have to trim it down like I had to, but I grabbed this Dollar Tree one. It works great. Um, you don't need any of the really expensive score tape for this kind of project because people normally get this and then they're going to toss it, right? Um, so you see the score line there and I'm trying to lay it right between my score lines. Um, okay, there. And then I'm going to press it. All right, that's it. And then now we're going to take um, our template where the perforated marks we're just going to fold in like so. And then you will need some liquid glue. I don't recommend using the liquid glue on the acetate part because it will be a little bit messy. So I don't recommend that, okay? All right, so then you'll have this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring this flap over. You're gonna fold this one in. This is the front. And then this is the side piece here. You're gonna fold that in. Grab your liquid glue. I use Barely Art. You can use whatever you want. I just choose Barely Art and fabri -Tac, which are my to-go glues. I'm going to fold that over. So you see that? I folded this flap. This is the front. Folded that flap in. And then this flap here, I'm going to bring it over and sit it on top of that flap, right? Okay. See that? So on this little flap, I'm going to grab my wet glue. This is the only time I recommend using your wet glue. Do not use it on your acetate because it could leak out and you don't want that. Okay, so then I'm going to fold that over. That way it sits right on top. Grab your bone folder if you want or use your finger. Run it through and voila, that's your box. That's it. Fold that in like so. Fold that flap. Put that in. Okay, and then you'll have this here and pull that in. So the other part of 
this SVG file is that you get this little card here, okay? That is where your keychain is going to sit. So there's some perforated lines. We're going to fold those back carefully. Okay. Like so. I'm going to grab the one that's for the this one here. And you can change these up like I did on this one. I did a white backing with the black box. You can do it however you want. Easy peasy. So you cut these two files basically. This is what you get when you get the file. You get this one and this one. Just like that. That's it. That's all you cut. Alright, so then we'll take whatever it is you're going to put in. Pull this in through, slide your keychain through, and that's it. That is all you do. You can um, glue your flaps down if you want, but if they're going to be opening it up as a gift, you may not want to do that. And then pull that in, and then pull that flap down. this down if you want, put a little bit of washi tape down, tape it, glue it, whatever you want to do. Um, you can add a little ribbon, tie it like it's a little gift. Um, like I said, you can add something like this, a little embellishment if you want. Um, I grabbed these from you know, Hobby Lobby. You can add that if you want, whatever you want. It doesn't, not, not, you don't necessarily have to decorate your box. That's just an idea. Some people like to go a little extra. These are going to be gifts, so um, we're not going to go all the way out, but you know, that's just that. All right, so for the next one, you're going to see me do it really fast as we assemble these, okay? So I'll try to be quiet, but um, you'll see me working through. All right, so we're going to start.
boxes. As you can see, I had to shabby chic it up. Um, I just added some seam binding, some little crochet doily that I had in the bling, just to kind of give it a little bit of cutesy look to it. You can add stickers, you can add whatever you want, as I said before. Anyway, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, and if you're interested in purchasing the SVG file for this cute box, let me know in the comments below, and as soon as we have the website up and running, I will contact you and let you know that it is now available on our website. Carla is working diligently to get the website up and going. Primarily, we're going to have a lot of the SVG files and a lot of the findings that we find in thrift stores, etc., etc. But this is the first little cute project that we have created on behalf of myself, Carla, and baby Emma. I hope you enjoyed our cute little project that we created. Until next time, bye.